friends, it's Liv and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. If you are, hi, I'm Liv. It is so nice to meet you. So today for you guys, I am doing my March TBR, which let me tell you, this was a struggle. So as some of you may know, I am currently home visiting family in Illinois until the end of the month. So I have all of my bookshelves here full of books that I have never read just calling to me. They're like, Liv, Liv, you're home. You have time read me. So I tried my best to narrow this down. I do have eight books here for you guys that I am hoping to get to this month. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so for this first book, I honestly waited to film this until the book came out, just so I could have it here with me in all of its glory. And it is Crescent City House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. This story follows our main character Bryce, who is half fae living in this Crescent City full of all different types of magical creatures. So from what I've heard, this is kind of like a big murder mystery involving all of these different creatures. Like there is some mass murder, I guess, that takes place near the beginning and it is up to Bryce and Fallen Angel Hunt to discover who killed these people and why. Some of you guys may know Sarah J Mass is one of my favorite authors of all time. I am legit mass trash and I have been looking forward to this video ever since she first announced that it was coming out like years ago. So the fact that I am holding this in my hands right now in all of its glory, look how beautiful this is. So the fact that I am holding this right now just completely blows my mind and I will have a reading vlog up for you guys as soon as I am done with this beast. Like it is She's, she's a long book. She's thick. So I'm really excited to finally read this and let you guys know all of my thoughts on it. So look out for that coming soon. Okay, so next up I would talk about City of Heavenly Fire. However, I have already finished it this month. So I'm not gonna go too in depth on my plans to read that because I have already read it. So next up I will instead talk about the Shadow Hunters Codex by Cassandra Clare and Joshua Lewis. I don't think there's too much to say on this book itself because it is more of a field guide to the world of the Shadow Hunters, but it is full of this beautiful artwork throughout the entire thing. Like there's just all these illustrations and little footnotes. And so it's really cool, I think, for any Shadowhunter fan to read and kind of have like an idea of how the world works. So I'm really excited to finally read this one. And then after that, I am moving on to the Bane Chronicles. This is a book that I have been looking forward to reading probably since we first met Magnus. And it is a series of novellas and short stories about like his life and his interactions with shadow hunters throughout the years. And so I'm so excited to get to see different interactions with characters that we haven't really seen yet, or at least I haven't really seen yet, because I know that like the characters from Chain of Gold come into play here. And I mean, I personally probably won't get to Chain of Gold for a while just because I still have to read the entire Dark Artifices trilogy and all of the novellas in between. So as much as I think the cover for Chain of Gold is so pretty and I'm so excited to finally read it one day, I'm just not quite there yet. But I will get my Chain of Gold fix, hopefully with the Bane Chronicles as soon as I finally get to pick this up. It is en route to my house, so I'm just waiting, waiting for it to show up in the mail any day now. And I am so ecstatic. To finally get to read that. So next up I am participating in the Elderling Along which oh my gosh that name is just so so perfect. I believe this is hosted by Becca and her books so I will have all the information for that down below but it is reading the first two trilogies by Robin Hobb so we are starting with the first book to the first year trilogy which is Assassin's Apprentice. I have wanted to read Robin Hobb's books for the longest time but there's so many that I just really never know where to start so as soon as Becca first announced that this was going to be a read-along that they're doing this month I had to jump in. I have owned this first book forever. I think I found it in a secondhand store when I stayed abroad in England about a year and a half ago. So yes, it's been it's been on the shelves for a while. So I'm so excited to finally get to read this and join in on the Robin Hobb hype train because that just sounds like such a great time and I am so excited. Next up, I, I'm working so hard on finally finishing series that I start. I am so proud of myself and I hope you are also proud of me. But next up we have The Ship of the Dead, which is the last book in the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard series following Annabeth Chase's cousin Magnus and his interactions with the Norse gods. I absolutely love Magnus as a character, as a narrator. 
I think he's so funny. He just, his, his wit, his humor is so well paced, so perfectly timed. The original book follows Magnus as he's living as a homeless teen on the streets of Boston when he is killed in battle when attacked by this monster and taken to Valhalla. And the reimagining of Valhalla in this world is that it's actually a hotel where anyone who has died in battle can be picked by a Valkyrie, taken to Valhalla, where they can train until Ragnarok, which is the Norse apocalypse, end of the world. I have gone on and on in pretty much all of my videos about how much I love Rick Riordan and his stories. I love his characters, how diverse they are, their dynamics with each other. I love everything about anything Rick Riordan has ever written. I really love the cameos that come into play from the original Percy Jackson series as Magnus and Annabeth are cousins. So Annabeth does play a minor role in the series herself. Percy is mentioned. We do finally get to see Magnus and Percy meet in the beginning of this third book, which I loved. Because Percy Jackson is like my OG fictional boyfriend. I have been in love with Percy Jackson since I was 10 years old. And so anytime that he pops up anywhere, I'm like, I love you. So that was really cool to see in this book. And I'm really excited to see how the trilogy ends. Not quite ready to say goodbye to these characters, but I am really, really hopeful that we will see them again. So continuing on with the fact that I am finally continuing series that I've started, I picked up the second book to Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo, which is Siege and Storm. More information is finally coming out about the TV series. I have kept up with all of the actors for that and I am unreasonably excited for this show with the fact that I have not read all of these books yet. I did give Shadow and Bone four out of five stars I want to say and I know Becca from Becca and her books absolutely loved the second book so I feel like I'm going to. I really do trust Becca and her reading tastes are very similar to mine so I feel like I'm really going to like this one. I'm a couple chapters in so far and I like it. I like that the action of this one kind of picked up right away a little bit. So I'm excited to get further on in this one and, you know, see see what happens. I'm intrigued. And I really want to finish the original trilogy before I start Six of Crows, but I'm really tempted to just start Six of Crows already because I want to meet Kaz Brecker. And also Ben Barnes is the Darkling, and I have loved Ben Barnes since my Narnia days as a child, so... Seeing him as the Darkling is something that I am so excited to see. I feel like he fits the character really well and I have faith that he's going to do so well and I'm so excited. Number eight I have here is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, which was recommended to me by my friend Danny over at the YA Allegiance. I will link her Instagram down below because I know that is her main platform. And I've heard this kind of mentioned as like another kind of shadow and bone. So that really intrigues me because again, I like Shadow and Bone. So I feel like this is something that I will definitely enjoy. This story follows our main character, Nadia, who can talk to gods. And I know Nadia has to team up with this prince and I've heard some synopsis say it's a kid, some say it's a monster. So maybe it's some kind of like supernatural being that is a kid. I don't know, but I know that the three of them need to team up to take down this kind of evil force that's been reigning for a while. That's really all I know about this book. I did receive it in an Owl Crate box about a year ago now, so I'm really excited to finally pick it up because I've been staring at it on my shelves for a while. But I've been putting it off since I didn't know too much about it, but now that I've done my research, now that I've heard a lot of good reviews about this book, I figure it's time to finally give it a chance, and I know the sequel is coming out soon, so I... I'm kind of reading this just in time, so hopefully I'll be like hyped for the sequel, but I won't have to wait nearly as long for it to come out. Last but not least is a book that I also do kind of want to vlog my experience with to get up for you guys, but I am finally going to read the Artemis Fowl series by Owen Colfer. I don't know if you guys have seen the trailer for the movie has finally come out, like the trailers come out. It looks awesome. And unlike some people, I did not actually grow up reading the Artemis Fowl series. I tried to read the first book. I think I was in like fifth grade. I borrowed it from one of my teachers, but I really couldn't get into it. I think it was kind of, I tried to do both like an audiobook and the physical book. And for some reason that just didn't really work for me because I'd never listened to an audiobook at that point. So really couldn't get into it then, but I am going to try again now. I do want to try to marathon all eight books in the series before the end of May when the movie comes out. So pray for me, I'm going to need all of the luck that I can get with that one. I really don't know much about the Artemis Fowl series. I know that Artemis himself is like this like 12 year old awesome like spy billionaire whiz kid 
and I know there's fairies that come into play, and there's a lot of twists and turns. I've heard this series is a lot of fun, so I'm very excited to get on the hype and kind of see what I think about it now that I am an adult. So I'm really, really looking forward to finally getting to read this series. Hopefully I can get through more than the first book this month since the movie does come out at the end of May and there are eight of them. So again, please, please wish me luck. All right, and there you have it guys. That was my TBR and what books I intend on reading in the month of March. I do hope you did enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please comment down below if you have read any of these books, what were your thoughts on them or what book are you most excited to get to in the month of March? I really wanna know. Please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and you can also click that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video because I do upload every Monday and every Thursday on this channel and you don't want to miss what's coming next. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!